Hey, it's me again, the Grey Man. Um, I remember a little while ago I did a video about Ladybird books and about the stamps uh, related to Ladybird books that came out recently. And I told you I was going to do a video about the best ever Ladybird book that ever, ever came out. Yeah, you may not agree with this, but you should agree with it because it's true. The best ever Ladybird book is the Ladybird book of dinosaurs. Yes, you know it's the best. So good. I've got two copies of it. That's how good it is. So here we go. Here are the books. The Ladybird Leader's Book of Dinosaurs. The greatest book that ever was written. This one's got a little bit of a damage to it. It's so a little bit of drawing on the cover. This one's a bit more fresher, this one, actually. Uh, I wonder where I got this one from. Because I know oh, this is uh, someone we used to look after. Uh, one of our neighbours' girls. Uh, but I'm going to look at the old worn version of the book. The one that I obviously loved. Well, we read a lot. Got a bit of spine damage there, but you know what you expect. This book is, after all, from 1974, when I was <coughs> years old. And there's my name at the top there. Uh, my little brother, my big brother, my little sister. So yeah, it looks like we all had a read of it. Uh, and here we go. Interesting. In the beginning, the world must have looked like this. At first, nothing lived on the land or in the sea. There were no plants. No animals, no people. Life began in the sea. You've got the trilobite, the bellum knight, the jellyfish, the ammonite, sponges and starfish, which are still around today, of course. Then the age of the fishes. And the plants like ferns began to grow. And then finally, some fish crawled onto the land, the lobe fin fish and the ichthyostega. Mm, they were the first amphibians, yes. And it tells you how to say amphibians. That's probably how I learned how to say amphibians. <laughs> Some of these other ones are a bit harder though. Like Eogigrinus. Eogigrinus? Mm, yeah, Eogigrinus. I don't know. And Aeriops. Aeriops. Some, some amphibians of yester, yester millennia. Uh, the first reptiles, Seamoria. I see Moria. Got a better eyesight than you. Edaphosaurus. Edaphosaurus. <laughs> Sounds like she was said in a Yorkshire accent. Edaphosaurus. <laughs> Dimetrodon. Then you got rodden reptiles, frogs, and alligators. You all know what they look like. But this is what they. This is their ancestors. This book's about their ancestors. Sea reptiles. Gliding reptiles. They've got everywhere. These reptiles did. Ram Ramphorhynchus, Dimophodon, Pterodactylus, there you go, Pteranodon, there we go, this is how we first discovered about dinosaurs, by finding their footprints and also their skeletons, or parts of the skeletons that we then put together. There's a skeleton of a Brontosaurus, and the word dinosaur means terrible lizard. Okay, so here's Brontosaurus when he had his skin on and his flesh, and his Diplodocus. Now, I always used to pronounce it Dipl Diplodocus, and sometimes I still say Diplodocus, because I think that's what I, I called it when I was growing up, and that's what I still think of it as, Diplodocus, but it's not. It's Diplodocus. No, I don't think Diplodocus just sounds nicer somehow. Ah, oh, don't ask me. Uh, so here we have the Stegosaurus and the Anthrodemus. I don't remember that one, but he obviously is important, because he's on the cover, look. Antrodemus on the cover. Um, doesn't say who this one is in the background. The dinosaurs were around for a really, really, really long time, in fact. In fact, that was one of my favourite little sayings, a lot of sayings, but a fact, is the Stegosaurus and the T-Rex. T-Rex lives closer to human beings in time than it did to the Stegosaurus. So I think the Stegosaurus is something like 200 million years ago. And the T-Rex, I don't know, maybe 50 million years ago, something like that. So it's closer to us in time than it is to the Stegosaurus. I find that interesting anyway. Iguanodon, one of the earliest dinosaurs that was discovered. Some of these facts I'm giving you aren't actually in this book. I've just, like, I, you know, but these, this book helped me to be interested in those facts. <laughs> Ankylosaurus, he's a cute one. I wish they were still around today, not at 15 meters, so 15 feet long like this one was, but like a little handheld Ankylosaurus. I think that'd be really cute. <laughs> uh, Anatosaurus, Corifosaurus, he's got a nice little hat on. He's got like a Mohican, like a punk, a punk rocker with a little Mohican. 
Protoceratops. Tyrannosaurus. Sometimes called Tyrannosaurus Rex, aren't they? Their arms are weird looking compared to the size of their bodies, but you wouldn't say that to it because, well, it, it wouldn't understand you from the first part and it would eat you anyway. Whatever you say to it, it probably eat you, so it makes a difference. You might as well call it silly for having silly, small, short arms, really. <laughs> it's not going to make it any more well disposed towards you. You're just going to be dinner. But luckily they're not around anymore, so that's good. Even if it did live closer to us in time than the Stegosaurus did. Triceratops. Archaeoreptix. Archeo Archaeopteryx, sorry. Ah, oh, I practiced that one as well. Archaeopteryx. Uh, the first real birds. And then we get onto the mammals. The mammals, the giant bears and the giant rhinos and the giant horse-like things. Apparently this is not an early horse. This one is an early horse. Eohippus. Woolly rhinos. Woolly mammoth. Saber-toothed tiger. There you go. And this is what we look like in size compared to these dinosaurs. Interesting, huh? Anyway, that was it. That was the greatest book ever published by man. The Ladybird Leader's Book of Dinosaurs. <laughs>